there folks and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Oh, we're still working on the old big blue trailer. Big it's a tan it's it's antique white. So it's big blues boat trailer, which is also my boat trailer. But since I call it big blues because you know it's gonna spend more time on it than I am, for sure. So as you guys have seen and witnessed. The boat is on the trailer, but it's not finished. There's a there's an apparatus up front here that's missing, called a a winch tower, for lack of better terms. Terms. We also have to secure the back of the trailer. Now, when I say secure the back of the trailer, I'm talking secure the boat to the back of the trailer and I don't know of a good spot to put you guys here oh yes I do but I wanted to show you a few things let's let's get the Sun to the back of the camera so we get decent lighting while we're in the shade <laughs> holy smokes what am I doing here I'm gonna drag this thing back over ouch okay that's okay this far is enough, not a sponsored video but I have done a sponsored video for these folks and it's the Strapano straps and what this is all about is strapping the back of your boat down and they come with they got this nice system here that i bought these these are all stainless steel it comes with mounting hardware which is actually pretty cool because i've done this two ways when things needed to be come on get out of the bag so some nice stainless 304 stainless bolts nuts and washers lot nylock nuts even and they have these standoffs that you can put on here if you want to angle some things at a different angle plus these things are really strong and they can also what's kind of nice about using these every now and then is you can put some flex on it these things are uh, you know a flex so you can bolt this on back here like this and bolt this back down here and this will kind of pitch things out at a little bit of an angle so it could be out here like this and not rub on the back of your boat this one here i think i'm going to be okay with it you know do i want it rubbing on the back of the boat or not that's the big question right because i can use this and this can pitch it out at an angle so it doesn't rub on the back of the boat the whole idea behind this isn't the straps holding it against it it's the straps putting tension down to prevent it from sliding so part of me says let's tr let's try let's try Let's not try, let's do, put this thing on. Uh, we're gonna go, I wanna go this direction with it. And we'll go ahead and go in the top hole here. Nice thing is this trailer's already got a bunch of holes in it, right? We're doing just such an animal like this. Cause then I can put the, the nut right here. Now the reason I put the washer, now there's different ways, different schools of thoughts on how to do things. I put the washer on the back side of this so it'll help distribute the pressure of this here out to a little bit bigger area. So less fatigue on the trailer possibly. And then on this one, since I'm not worried about this piece fatiguing, I want to put the extra strength on over here on this side. So we're going to put this bolt in through here, which... And then I can go ahead and we'll lift this up. And this isn't a really a how-to, but you'll ask yourself, why do not do I not have some of these on my boat trailer? To make my life so much simpler. And you can see how fast they install. Now the only difference between mine and your boat trailer is you, you may have to drill a half inch hole. This is half inch diameter hardware. Just a half 13 bolts. But now you can kind of get the idea of what this thing's gonna do. So when this is tightened up right here, is that gonna work for me pretty well? So right now, this isn't gonna touch my boat, which is kind of preferred. If it is gonna touch your boat, um, put a piece of rubber or something here to protect it every time you put it on. I'm doing this so I don't have to. And uh, let's just get again what did i do i brought wrenches with me i was freaking paired uh maybe let's see here i 
And then I say this hardware that comes with it, I'm talking the bracket hardware, is a really nice, sturdy piece of steel. This isn't, and it looks like it might be powder coated. Maybe it's only painted, but it seems pretty durable. That's pretty tight. Let's get this one. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long to install these at all. Now, if you got to bring out your drill and drill some holes, it's going to take you a little longer. One advantage of this trailer that has all these square holes in it is I get to bolt a bunch of stuff up with half inch bolts without it drilling a single hole. Now, ugh. I got this not crazy tight, so I can actually and keep in mind the only thing this is trying to do is creating some more friction, but it's also keeping the boat from hopping and separating from the trailer. Say you're going around a corner and you hit some bumps and it's a little sharp and this thing pops up off the trailer. I've got these bunks on the outside of my chain that runs the full length of the boat. So that's going to help prevent the side to side. Plus, if it goes crazy sideways, it could hit my fender. Um, it could be a, another, what's called a fail safe point. Not a good one. But uh, let me finish tightening this down now that I've got some tension on it. So now we're good and tight. This is pretty solid. The cool part about this whole situation is when it comes time to see there I just relieve the pressure by pushing that tab all I gotta do is undo this done this stays with the trailer doesn't interfere with the boat at all when you load the boat you can push this down let it take up the slack pull this up you can hear that that's got some tension on it that's gonna let the boat stay put so as you can see, this is a, you know, my son and I are probably one of the fastest people. We're not pros at it, but when we go to a boat ramp and we're in the rigging lane, we probably, if you sat there and time people all day, we probably spend the least amount of time in a rigging lane before we're, when we're dropping in the water or when we're leaving the lake. Because my goal is to get to the lake, get in the water, and not spend a whole bunch of time transporting coolers, transporting this, all that stuff's in my boat before I leave my home. I might have to climb in there and drop a bag of ice in there that, while I'm fueling up, but that's it. Uh, when we get to the water, it's one of these guys. It's bam. Oops, I didn't have this all the way down. So it's bam. Drop this down, drop the other side down. Release the front winch a little bit so I got room to get in the water and let it float and then I can unhook it. And we're off to the races. Obviously, don't forget your drain plug. But yeah, I like this. this. These are nice. I wouldn't call them crazy cheap, but for what they are, definitely worth it. Yep, like it a lot. Let me get busy. I'll get busy putting the other one on and we'll back up and take a look at it. There it is, folks. That looks pretty spiffy. You know, it just... Let's admit it, when you see that on the back of someone's boat versus a ratchet strap with the tail hanging off, whipping in the wind and all that stuff, it just tells people, you know what you're doing. So don't be afraid to get you some of that stuff bought. I'll leave a link in the description below uh, as to where you can obtain exactly what I just bought if you want to put that on your boat. As you can see, it was an easy install. Now on a roller bunk trailer, let's just say it's a little more difficult on this setup, but it can be done. 
I just haven't done it yet. I've been going with what's there. But you know, if I'm designing, let's just call it the world's best boat hauler. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. Let's go back inside and show you what we started off the channel with. Wow, that sun's bright. Can you guys see that? Oh man, let's get in here. And uh, yeah, let's let things adjust. All right, I can put those tools away. So in the beginning of the video, you saw me doing a little sawing. Well, we're building, uh, you know, the missing piece on the front. Here's the one that came off. And there's a few things I don't like about it. This here, sheet metal, bent over, welded on, bolted. It's okay. This thing that's gotten all twisted, eh, I don't like that a whole lot. Because I was going to recondition this guy, reuse these pieces. But then my brain took over and says, why? These aren't the ones, but these are ones I got ordered. They're supposed to show up today. Hopefully they show up today so I can bolt this onto the trailer tomorrow. Some stainless U-bolts with a three inch inside, long enough to go up past the thickness and bolt onto some plates. So let me show you some of the stuff I have currently created. So what you see here is the beginnings of the tower. The boat would be right here. So this is the old trailer tongue. Repurposing again, yep, can't help it. So in order to fasten this down to the boat, or to the boat, to the trailer, I have drilled some plates. So I've got some plates here. There's one I'm gonna weld up here. That's gonna have two U-bolts going through it. And then another plate back here, like thisly, like thusly, like this. That'd be welded onto here, where another U-bolt will go in. So this will have you know, four, three half inch stainless U-bolts holding it down to the trailer frame. That should be enough. You know, when it comes to engineering stuff, I think I like to think that I can do it pretty good. And, and when you don't always understand the full tensile strengths of materials, you tend to do what I do. Just a little bit of overkill. A little bit of overkill ain't gonna be a problem. Let's show you what I'm talking about here, what I've got going. I'm gonna, we're gonna go to the whiteboard because I know that's one of you guys' favorite thing to do. Okay, I don't know that. And we've got, right now we've got the full on, we're just using, we're just using GoPro mic here. Uh, you guys gave me a lot of great feedback on the earbuds. Uh, said the sound quality was great. Most of you said it was good or great. Uh, a couple of you said, I kind of like the uh, background noise because it feels like we're right there in the shop with you. I can't agree with you more. That's actually pretty good too. But when the background noise starts drowning out what I want you to see or hear, the noise blocking out what you, I want you to see. Hmm. Deaf in one ear, blinded one eye. Deaf in one eye. Deaf in one eye, blinded one ear. Something like that. Okay. Take a look, I, I haven't shared this information with anybody yet but my wife. So shh. So right now, we got 740 LBSs for the trailer itself on the scale. We had 59 pounds we added for the bunks we put underneath it. We have 11 pounds for the front bunk, that little V up front. So it gave me a, gave me a total of 810 pounds so far for the whole trailer. I have no idea what the boat weighs. Now we've got the boat back on it. And let's just say with the boat on it, trailer underneath, axle and wheels. When I picked it up right here with the hoist, with my, with my big game scale, which will go up to 550 pounds, the tongue weight currently was 100 or 520. Now, the trailer itself behind the, behind the Jeep weighed 600 and uh, what was that 620 pounds yeah 620 pounds then when i put the you know this little wheel down here and supported it took the weight off the ball of the of the jeep it weighed 740 pounds so that tells me i got 120 pounds of tongue weight right sure let's go with that because this went up i mean there's some there's some math yes let's just go with that then when I put the boat on the trailer and picked it up right here with my big game scale, it said 500 and, whoops, not 40. It said 520 pounds. 
So right now with the boat on it, 520 pounds of ton weight. That's a little tall for what I want. But keep in mind, I've got to put an engine back here yet. I got to put an outdrive on here. We know what the, the proppy thing. And then I'm going to put a kicker motor back here with its own little proppy thing, right? And then I'm going to put two, as I've calculated them so far, 31 gallon fuel tanks on either side of the engine. So yes, that's a lot of weight there in fuel. So with all this loaded up back here, and this is coming in, this should come in, I think I come in close to, uh, I can't remember what it was, 950 pounds maybe? I've been calling it 1,000 pounds, but let's call it 950. So I'm hoping at 950 back here, now this has got a lot of leverage because this is way out here, right? Uh, I got 950 pounds back here. Will that bring this down? My goal is to be between 150, no, I'm gonna go 120 to 150 pounds tongue weight. That's not a crazy amount of tongue weight, but it is a generous amount of tongue weight to keep this thing trailing really good. This trailer by itself trailed really, really well. So what we're building now with those pieces, here's my one piece. Let's just call it something like that. That's the other piece you saw me cut is one that goes right here. And then we're gonna put a plate on it here with a winch. Now my bow hook, let's just shorten the boat up now that I've uh, drawn it too close. The bow winch is say right here, or bow hook is right here. So we're gonna have a hook that goes up through the winch to here, right? Then I'm gonna have another piece that probably goes from here up to here. So it helps support the winch. Uh, so the, the winch can be pulling straight in. When it's pulling this way, pulling it up the trailer in line with the trailer. And then it's gonna have a bow roller up here. So that this will pull between it and pull down against this bell here, the front roller. I'll show you that here in a second. And uh, then everything's trapped. And then I'll have to weld me something on here so I can have my little chain going up to the bow hook. That's my safety chain. With all that being said and done, that's what we're building right now. That's what we're gonna do right here, right now. Now, I don't have the engine in it yet. I don't have the spare tire mounted yet. The cool part about the spare tire is that is also weight. So if for some reason, I get less than this number here, I can add like, what is it, a 30 or 40 pound is the weight of the a spare tire that I can add right up onto here if I need to. And that'll bring the tongue weight back. There again, we're reinventing a few things just for the simple fact that I have not had a six cylinder engine in this boat. I have not had this boat on the trailer yet. And I, and I, it definitely only had, this boat originally only had two 12 gallon tanks, which is 24 gallons. I'm going up to 60 gallons because I'm estimating if I got 60 gallons of fuel and I've got five miles to the gallon is what I'm hoping to average with this thing, I could cover a range of 300 miles before I need fuel. Just to put that in perspective, the furthest my son and I have gone on the Mississippi River to date in a given day is 180 miles. So this should allow us to make some pretty lengthy trips and not have to have fuel be one of our major worries. Unless the fuel pump isn't working right and getting the fuel to the engine, that has been a worry in the past when we took the cobalt. Here is the, what I'm putting on the front bow, or the, uh, the bow roller on the front of the trailer. It's wide, it's V-shaped, it's gonna be pulled in tight to this. It's, uh, the reason I like the width of these, you know, versus just this piece here, there's a lot of boats that just have this and then a metal piece over here and a bolt sticking out. This is gonna protect the whole boat because yours truly does not always hit the trailer straight. So I've done taken measures to, I'm gonna have guide posts on the back, which get me in there. All the rollers on the trailer are self-centering, help straighten it out. And then have this really wide target to hit. So maybe I can stand a chance, stand a snowball's chance of hitting this thing on the trailer correctly, straightly. And that way, when you pull it out of the water, you don't have to worry about the boat being off like this or off like that on the trailer, and you're backing it back in so you can float it back into place. My goal is when I get the bow hooked up, when I push it up, the boat up to the front of that, hit that, put my hook on it, do a couple of cranks to bring some tension up on there, a signal, and the person drags me out of the water. Then all I got left to do is hook the safety chain up, back the ratchet straps down on the back we just installed, hook them up, goes click, 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 Pull the plug 
and we're off. I don't take anything out of the boat. I leave fishing poles, I leave everything in the boat. They all ride pretty well. And especially in this boat, it's gonna be even deeper walls. The wind is never gonna see the bottom of this boat. Uh, that's for sure. Okay, so enough chit chat. Let's get back to welding and cleaning up and doing all kinds of fun stuff like that because uh, I do have the winch here. Bought me a 1500 pound winch. It has a strap instead of a cable. I like straps versus cables because I don't like wires in my hand. And what else do we have? I gotta also build, so I cut the front, I cut this plate here for the winch to sit on, Ugh. like this. And it is a little extra long right now. We gotta drill bolt holes, bolt holes in it. And uh, we'll go from there. Ooh, it was it was warm outside. Now what was crazy is yesterday, I was in here, it's 74 degrees out here right now. And it's, I think, 80 something degrees outside. I know you guys didn't come here for a freaking weather report, but I, I just gotta know where my sweat point's at. It's 83 out right now, humidity, 54%. Uh, it's not a dry heat, but it is approaching a reasonable humidity. Okay, so I've got a little project over here. I gotta finish up on my weld table because then I'll swap out my weld table and my workbench here. That's why they're on wheels. I can bring it to the door. I can do my welding. I can grind while the sparks go outside, not all over my shop and create all that dust everywhere so I can keep my shop as clean as possible. Uh, I know when you look around here, you're going, this isn't clean as possible. No, it's not, no, it's not. But I have, you know, purchased some more totes like this one here, just a handful. We got, this has all the gimbal reassembled new parts in it. The other one I have sitting here has all the hydraulic brake line and fittings and, and flare tool and all that stuff in it for the boat, uh, for Big Blue. And then we've got, more stuff everywhere. I also got some blue tape here. What I'm gonna use this for is when I get ready to sit and fit this thing on the trailer, I don't wanna scratch up all that tongue paint and I'm gonna put blue tape down, just to kind of set things in place and, until I figure out where I like it and want it. Do a couple of Sharpie marks so when I set it down and bolt it in place, I don't scratch my paint. The other advantage of, over that other boat, uh, the tower mount that had the two plates that went down the side well, they don't, they bolt up tight at the top and the bottom and the whole side plate's there. For what? It's for collecting dirt, d debris, grime, moisture, salt. If you ever happen to pull it in salty, salty roads, but that's not here. Uh, I don't pull my boats around in the wintertime very often. Okay, never. Yes, I have. I've pulled them to the scale to weigh them in the wintertime. But... This plate here, just one plate on top here with a painted surface here and a painted surface here and those sandwiched down nice and tight. A lot less rust action is gonna happen between the metal surfaces. I've thought about even coating both surfaces with Sikaflex. Sikaflex, as you guys might have seen in a previous video, when I was testing the adhesion and sealing strength, not so, not so much the sealing strength, but the adhesion, adhesive strength of the Sikaflex. And when I say Sikaflex, it's a Sikaflex S as in Sam, I-K-A-F as in Frank, L-E-X. Sikaflex 291. This stuff is amazing. I will put it up almost against the even the good stuff. I even tried the good stuff. or oh, the right stuff? Yeah, the right stuff. Something like that. There's some kind of stuff. And this towered over all the rest of the sealant slash adhesives that I tried. So it made me a believer. Uh, I have no idea. Huh, made in USA. Isn't that interesting? Where I first started hearing about Sikaflex was on Danger Marine. Danger Marine? Danger Marine? Yeah. Uh, watching his show and his boat show and stuff, and he uses, they use a lot of Sikaflex around porthole fittings and all that because it works, and they're in a saltwater environment. Um, but that's when I picked up on it and started, eh, is it really that good? What's, then I bought some of the 3M equivalent. It's not equivalent, this is better.
And all you 3M believers out there, if you've got a 3M product you think is better than that Sikaflex 291 for adhesion slash sealing, now there is some stronger stuff. There are some epoxies that are just glue, right? Well, I need something that was in a sealant adhesive. And the a sealant part of it need, needs to stay, maintain some of its rubbery type properties like a silicone, but with some strength, some serious strength. And uh, like I said, the test I did a few videos back, that was the winner. Okay, now, as you can see here, there is another saw in the shop. Uh, I still got this saw back here that is on my chop off. You know, just I use it as a cutoff and it's worked fantastic for doing some quick cutoffs. It'll cut through, as you saw in the video, cuts through this tubing. This this is uh, some four and a half inch wide. Golly, it's gotta be, is that 316 stock, I think? Get off the tail here. That's quarter inch. Zips right through that. But you got to cut it the edge way, not the long way, because I don't have a coarse enough tooth on there to do it this direction, which is fine. Quick quiz. This is not a ruler. Is this a combination square? But this is not a ruler. If you're calling it a ruler, you're wrong. <laughs> a ruler is a... Uh, Napoleon was a ruler. <laughs> this is a scale. And a tape measure is a tape measure. And I don't know what you call a ruler. Maybe it's the plastic ones you used to use in grade school. But this is a scale. Yeah, every time. All right. That was just, and if you guys have different things you call it, let me know what they are. I'm curious. But I was trained in school, in machine shop, in, in, in my machine shop class in high school and my community college uh, class on machining, it's a scale. If you call it anything else, you're not going to be a machinist or tool maker ever. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. What next? Well, I think I need to get this project out of my way and then we'll drill the holes, lay out the holes and drill it in this plate. Then I got my weld bench back to what I need so I can do some welding we're going to grind all the paint out of the way before we do our welding and uh, so let's just get after it
accidentally somehow ended up with two of these. Whether I ordered them or not, I didn't go back on and look. But I have two, so I utilized two, as you can see here. We're going to see it on the boat here shortly. But I'm going to get all the paraphernalia on here, as it were. And uh, we'll go from there. I think it turned out pretty well. Now some of you might be thinking, I watched this whole video just for this. Well, this takes a while to make. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now what I do like about these big bells on here is my boat can't get away and hit any of this very solid steel. I also got the winch cranker thingy. Got the strap installed on it yesterday. As luck would have it, yeah, that's no surprise I dropped something. As luck would have it, I was able to use two holes that were already on this piece. What are the odds that they all lined up? Now we gotta answer the burning question. What does it weigh? Fifty seven point six. With that on the tongue of the trailer, that's gonna bring the total weight of the trailer up to eight hundred and sixty seven pounds. That's tolerable. Uh, I bet you guys thought that winch probably weighed more than that, but it is all tubing. It is all 3 16 wall and the channel is even 3 16 wall. I got some quarter inch bits and pieces on here as well. So that adds up. Now I, I said earlier in the video, I believe that I had stainless U-bolts. I actually have galvanized. I didn't buy stainless. Stainless was going to be, these are like $11 a piece. Stainless was going to be like 26 or $27 a piece. And uh, quite frankly, the galvanized will hold up just fine. So let's get this out on the trailer and see how it looks. And we got to finish peeling the tape off of here. Yep. Did not realize that was steel. Sure. All right, I marked it out because I am going to put that sickle flex in between. So let's just set this down for a second. I think that's going to work out pretty good. Boy, I need a bigger hook. Wow. It's all right. We can fix that. You guys don't normally see me wear gloves. But this Sikaflex has glued the cap on. Oh my god. Wow. This Sikaflex is really, really nasty stuff when it comes to trying to get it off your hands. Good luck. So all I'm doing is putting down a thin layer just to keep water from between these two pieces of metal. And that way, maybe it won't rust so fast. I know I got the paint. This stuff works like it's tar. I mean, when you're mushing it around like this, it feels like you got your fingers in tar.
That should work. How? How? Good morning. Reggie, you gonna be on video? <coughs> you on video, buddy? <laughs> Hey buddy, how you doing buddy? You a good boy? I had to take off all the slack inside this here because it had the, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? I just hand wound it. Yeah, now she's jabbing and pulling down good. There we go. Well, that turned out quite well. Well, folks, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. This is amazing. It's strong. Uh, it's going to work great for winching this thing back up onto the trailer. Who knows, I may need a bigger winch, but this one seems to be working pretty good so far. Only thing I got left to do is a safety chain, and I've got a bolt hole right here that I can actually hang a chain, bolt a chain link up to, let it hang down here, and when I'm going, I can hook it up here. It'll protect it. Uh, the other nice thing about having this roller up above, you know, a lot of people, I've got my 76 StarCraft that I've actually got the roller above the winch, and people have ridiculed me relentlessly on it <laughs> it's like because i actually bent it up and made it a little better than it was but that's the way it's been forever and i also have a safety chain so the boat can't get away and go up above you know people go say hey, that's dangerous no i've got a safety chain if the strap was to give out the safety chain takes over that's why they call it a safety chain that's why you have safety chains on the front of your you know hitch so if the ball somebody forgets to clamp it down or it pops off the chains keep it tied to the uh, vehicle and that's not for your safety because once that comes loose it becomes wild and crazy that's for other people's safety that's so you don't kill somebody else but this is coming along uh, really really well now there have been some comments about the uh, let's call it the the flexibility in this tongue well if you watched the previous video where I put this thing down on the trailer and the tongue you saw it kind of give a little bit that's fine it's tubing it's going to give it's supposed to give a little bit if it was rigid it never gave at all it would just crack and break the other thing that's going to make a difference here is i've got it supported full length of the boat i now added this here which also acts as a, a front support along with that front piece it's all and this is a this is a tubing stiffener <laughs> for dang sure but the other nice thing about it is i will be putting close to a thousand pounds on the rear end of this boat it will have the engine, the fuel tanks, the uh, kicker motor, the outdrive, 
that will take all that flex you saw and it'll bring it back up because it's going to be pivoting picture the axle as a pivot point and that's going to take the pressure back off this tongue because think about it if i only have 150 pounds of tongue weight here that can't be a lot of weight on this tongue <laughs> so uh the fact that it flexes a little bit is perfectly okay i know a lot of people are concerned about it but believe you me it's gonna be fine plus the little bit of give there helps it ride better transfers less to the vehicle tow vehicle all right i'm pretty tickled with that now just to give you guys a general idea what it takes this here between sawing and cutting and grinding and sanding and painting and you know and all that i probably have eight hours to ten hours in this piece here now some of you are going to go god that's ridiculous you shouldn't take that long to fabricate stuff well when you're trying to figure it out as you go because there again i drew a sketch up i didn't put any measurements on it we kind of did the old uh, cut and fit method and it worked out pretty good we got both rollers making contact at the same time uh, it's gonna work pretty good this here if this happens to go down below here like if the boat trailer ramp or whatnot this, this this strap can run across this really nice roller here and protect it and and aid it in moving so there's a lot of advantages to what I did here now I did scratch it a little bit but thanks to the good people at uh, Rust-Oleum they make more paint so, and I do have a, a few spurts left, and I will wipe this off again, and we'll shoot it. Now, it's hard to tell the difference. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing it now that I'm out in the daylight and have the two right next to each other. I ran out of antique white, and this is called Navajo white. It is so close. I don't know if you guys even noticed it on the camera, and you should have because it's 4K, but yeah, as I stand back and glance at it now, I'm like, yeah, that's a different color, but we're not about making it beautiful, colorful, all kinds of fanciful I just want to make it functional I'm, I'm I'm function over form every time but now I think we got something that I can securely haul the boat to the lake or to the scales or to wherever I want to go now uh, once I get this tongue weight reduced so that my vehicle can handle it better 510 now 560 70 pounds of tongue weight because this is now up front ahead of the axles adding more tongue weight to it uh, we got to get that greatly reduced so it doesn't ruin my vehicle. But uh, I think it's pretty sweet. The nice thing is I do know what the engine weighs. So when I put the gimbal housing back on there and set the engine back in place, uh, that'll help it help me a lot. And I can actually, and I know what that weighs, so I can subtract everything I've been keeping track of here. And I can actually get the overall weight of the boat itself. Because I'm really curious what this aluminum hull weighs. It, it can't be much. because it didn't add that much tongue weight by having this much boat in front of the axle. All right. Well, last night I got back up. You know, can't just sit around and watch paint dry. So last night after dark, I went in, in the shop there, vacuumed and cleaned all the grinding dust stuff. What a mess. But uh, it's all cleaned up, ready for the next project. And I haven't figured out. There's no more fabrication I need to do for this particular thing, except for when I create the front engine mount. I might have to do a little bit of something there because the engine mount's got to move forward. I'm going to leave the existing wood there for the four-cylinder engine in place. The six-cylinder engine is going to have more, you know, more stuff there. Uh, but what I gonna what the next video is most likely going to be, and this is step by step. I know this is a long process and a lot of parts here. We're, this will be part five, I believe, and part six is going to be putting the gimbal housing back together. So once the gimbal housing is back together and because I just I got my shift cable in uh, that's the one piece that was holding me up you got the shift cable and now I can take and bring this uh, shift cable through the housing you don't have to worry about replacing it uh, it's gonna be brand new and I'll be able to put the gimbal housing back together on the back of the boat reattach it to the back of the boat with the inner piece the outer piece put the sickleflex in between and we'll be able to uh, easily set the engine back in place. So that's what's next, the gimbal assembly. I know this isn't crazy exciting unless you're a boat person. That's why there's a, uh, that's why this channel is nothing but boats now. It's all about boats, engines, outboards, inboards, and everything in between, boat related. I've got my second channel, RM3D Creations. Don't be afraid to go check that out. That's where I'm doing everything else, putting an alt data in cars, 
transmission fluid changes, general fabrication that's not boat related. It could be building a trailer uh, for a utility trailer, stuff like that. So check that channel out. Don't be afraid to like and subscribe over there as well. Share it with your buddies. Uh, if you find me entertaining enough to watch, I do appreciate everybody that does follow and does watch. Uh, you guys are fantastic. Your comments are, are magnificent. I really appreciate all the comments. Uh, and don't be afraid to leave tips. Uh, I thank people for tips all the time on there because the tips not only help me out, they could help somebody else out because they could read that and go, ah, oh, that's what I've been missing. So those, those comments really help a lot for other people to watch and see and, and uh, you know, learn from. Did I not take that weld all the way down? I did not. I missed about a quarter inch there. Oh well, that's the way it goes. This is Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you on the next vid episode, video, somewhere. Uh, see you next weekend. Bonus footage time. <laughs> okay, some people had asked me about adjusting the rollers on this trailer when I put it on here. So what I did is I had the back end of the boat supported with my cradle and then the front end supported with the trailer jack. And I had those rollers here about an inch off the trailer or off the boat here all the way down the length of it. So the first thing I did was raise all these up till they just met the keel here. And so that's where I wanted them to be. Once that was in place, the boat itself could teeter totter. And what I mean by teeter-totter is it could rock back and forth while it was sitting on those center, center rollers, which is great, right? So then what I did is I brought all these, all but two of them, on these here that support the bunk have, are slotted. So you can actually adjust them up and down. So what I did is I took the floor jack and put it on my axle here and jacked the bunk up tight against the boat. And I could adjust this one right here. And then the other thing I ended up doing, I had two of them that had just no slots, just square holes for the carriage bolts. So what I did there was found a happy medium of where those could go to support the boat. Now, you might ask, why didn't you have that one adjustable? Well, there's going to be a lot of weight back here and a lot of weight on the trailer back here. And I didn't want a sharp bump or anything to cause it to slip in the slotted hole. If it slips back here, that's not good at all. If it slips up in the other ones, it's still not good, not ideal, but less, uh, less, less things can happen is what I'm saying. So that's why I located those two. And then I, then I took the trailer jack, trailer jack, the regular car jack here, and I placed it under here on each one of the other ones and brought it up until it was just snug on the boat. Then what I did from side to side as well is I measured from the frame to the boat up so I could keep that square. And then I snugged each one of them down. Then when I was all said and done, I've got a trailer sitting on bunks that it should slide on pretty easily. We'll see, I hope. <laughs> and then uh, the rollers down the center, which will self-center as I pull the boat onto the trailer. So overall, I think things turned out pretty well. I'm not unhappy about this at all. Let's sneak up through here between big blue and little green. Maybe that's what I should call that boat. I got this, I think it's a 77. What brand was this one? I'm trying to remember. It's been a minute since I worked on it. Was it the Four Winds? Yeah. Four Winds by Safety Mate. But uh, you saw me put, maybe on another video on my other channel, you saw me replace the tires on my tire changer. But yeah, this uh, turned out really well. I do like that though. Big blue, a little green. Back there is the banana, even little or yellow. <laughs> uh, you might can tell I like colors on my boat. Because I got the cobalt there that's red and white. I got this old orange orange colored red thing. I don't remember what brand it is, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. 
I drug it home and there it sets. And you guys know the old Alumacraft over here that's got the dented in gunnel. It's been sitting here with its 90 horse Merc on the back of it, covered up, waiting for me to get to it. But you know me, I get too many irons in the fire and uh, I gotta, I'm gonna finish this fire first before I go into any other boats. I gotta get this operational in the water and then do some interior work, finish some of that stuff up. I got hours, lots of hours left on this one. So you're gonna see lots of content on the big blue yet. So don't be afraid that this is the end. It's not even close. But man, I'm just standing back here looking at it. Mercury, what do you say, buddy? And I really like how this is turning out. I mean, doesn't that look substantial? That looks like a way better trailer than what was on it. I like this a lot. Let me show you the original trailer again. So get a get a good mental picture of this guy. Yep, pretty cool. I'll take a look at this guy. That's kitty kitty. This is what was under it. A little bitty. This boat with the trailer fenders was as wide as the boat. These little bitty old tires. The dual axle and all that fun stuff, but that's what was under it now this is still a fine trailer this can still be turned into something fantastic just like i turned this other one into something fantastic over here all right that's the end of the bonus footage just wanted to answer that one question about adjusting the trailer bunks but uh it turned out pretty good let me get you one more last shot underneath here so you can kind of see what it looks like under it So that's the whole underside of the beast. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Enjoy the drone footage.